Hello and welcome to the Story Behind the Stories, your weekly look at the pages of the Nipawa Banner and Press. I'm Owen Devereaux, news reporter with the Banner and Press, welcoming you to our show. Uh, with me this week, Casper Wehan, a uh, reporter with the Banner and Press as well. Casper, good to have you in this week. Good to be here again. Uh, I get to make a double appearance. I was the host last week, if I remember correctly, and uh, here I am as a guest now. Yeah, it's and we have a lot of stories to go through this week. Yeah, I decided to be a little lazy last week. <laughs> Took some time off. You were probably appreciative of not having to see this mug on the show as well, but you know, we'll both power through this week's show and try and get through as best we can. But fortunately, as you said, when we got news like this, it makes it a little bit easier, a lot of good news to be able to share, especially one right for the front page for the community of Gladstone. Mm -hmm. Province has announced some new funding that's coming through in regards to uh, some grant programs, and the big winner was, um, as of this recording, was the town of Gladstone, $300,000 that they're going to be getting. Uh, matching about 50% of the required uh, money needed to build a brand new swimming pool in Gladstone. And it's fantastic. Uh, Kira Patterson was able to write up this story for us. We were able to get the information. Um, and it, it's really wonderful to hear to be able to see a community like that getting something like this, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And we do have a, a little map of the plans, kind of like top-down view. Uh, on page two there for you to see. It looks like it'll be a very interesting, uh, fun setup there. Uh, and it's it's been a while since the Gladstone Pool has been constructed, because uh, it was actually built in 1967 as a centennial project. So it's about 50 years plus old. So. Man, that is old. <laughs> yeah. It's older than me. You know that's old when it's older than me. <laughs> Yeah, so they're they're gonna get a really fresh new pool, so that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, their proposed timeline to start, I uh, got it highlighted here, um, is for the fall of 2022, and it looks like they're hoping to finish it for May of the following year. So, yeah. got something to look forward to in uh, the 2023 year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's nice about this as well is even though we focus primarily this week on Gladstone and their pool, there were so many other parts of this announcement. Uh, a few smaller ones here and there, 10,000 here, 11,000 there, 7,000 here. We are working on separate stories for those right now. And as soon as we are able to track down these individuals and these groups that are getting this money, we're going to be sharing more of those details with you. And with a few of them, it's a pleasant surprise. It seems like um, the money was released and somebody along the lines forgot to contact the people who were getting the money to let them know because there was a time where we were phoning up and saying, we want to comment on this money. And they were like, huh, what? What money? What are you talking about? What's going on here? Who are you people? <laughs> So we were the ones that were able to break the good news to them. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was a very interesting time. Uh, both people that I called uh, when I was talking to them about it initially, they're like, "What? Is, what are you talking about? What's going on?" Yeah. Um, and one of them, since their uh, their phone line wasn't connecting for me that day, uh, I think they were actually closed that day, which would explain a lot. Uh, I I didn't actually look at their hours. Um, I'd sent them an email and they called me the next day, I believe. And they're like, how did you get information about our funding? Where did this come from? You, uh, it, it's at times <laughs> like that where you got to play it cool and say, we're the media. We just know. <laughs> we just know. We have all the inside scoops. We're that good. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so no, I had to I had to send the details to them. It's like yeah, it's like a government release, you know. Uh, so it nothing suspicious going yeah. on. It's not a Ponzi but scheme. Yeah, so they're gonna they're gonna talk to people about that, and hopefully we'll get a good story from them because it sounds like they're gonna have some some good projects that they're undergoing there. Yep. Mm -hmm. And in fact, even better projects we're gonna be able to talk to you hopefully in the future on. I'll give you the straight shoot right here, although I can't give you specific details. We have another story, a story I wrote about a project, but we had to pull it. Um, just some of the details weren't ironed out just yet. So we had the story written. We had the people contacted. 
we had the quotes, we had all the words. Kira checked for all the punctuation and fixed it. It was done, it was ready for the front page. And then it wasn't. <laughs> And then just one little minor thing we had to sort of, okay, but, but again, we're cool with that. Um, it's not like they gave an organization or a community money and then said, no, we're taking it all away. They're still going to get the money. It's just they want to make sure all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed and everything's looked after. But it's just one of those behind the scenes things. This is a great front page, but it wasn't our original front page. And maybe next week, maybe a week after, hopefully sometime within the next couple of weeks, you will know what our front page was going to be. Uh, and again, we, we're not throwing anybody under the bus here. Just precaution is always a thing. They just want to make sure everybody's on the same page. So um, we were contacted, asked us to hold, hold, pump the brakes a little bit. And it was like, yeah, sure, no problem. We still got a lot of good news we're able to share. So that's what that was. So maybe next week, maybe seven months from now, hopefully not seven months from now, we'll be able to share that story with you uh, on the page and right here on NAC TV. So have I, have I piqued your interest yet? <laughs> you, think, you think I've got them curious yet, Casper? I think so. I think yeah. you're doing a good job. Yeah, yeah hopefully, hopefully, and I, I don't think it will, but hopefully it won't take seven months, as you said. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, all right, let's get into the pages of this week's paper. Uh, an announcement that came down from the province just on uh, Wednesday of this week that uh, stage one of the reopening plan is moving forward. It's something we all, I think, have been sort of anxiously anticipating. <sighs> it, it feels like it's, it, well, it has been. It's about 16 months since this all began, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. It's, it's been a long, weirdly feeling time wise event <laughs> yeah. and the thing is about it is it's we haven't been in these current restrictions in the 16 months but at times it really has felt like what we've been in so far has dragged out a bit mm -hmm. and if it's felt that way for us because we're still able to show up to work we're still able to work over the phones we're still able to do our jobs if we felt that dragging out i can't even imagine the businesses that had to close down that had to be dealing with this uncertainty and, and all this confusion. I can't even imagine what they've been dealing with. But they're finally going to be able to get a chance. A lot of them opening up 25% capacity or a certain number. So most likely, maybe by the time you're watching this, it's going to be Saturday the 26th where they're going to open things up there. And yeah, I can finally get a haircut. That'll be nice. <laughs> Yeah, I need one too. I'm very overgrown and it's driving me insane. So I'm going to hopefully book one soon too. <laughs> you want to know the weird part about this though? I can finally get a haircut. It's been what, about two months now maybe? Feels about two Roughly months? Roughly that, yeah. yeah. It's only been about two months, yet still it's only this long. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm not exactly a hippie here, am I? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're doing okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, mine, I, the way I get it cut when it grows out, it's very noticeable. I just feel like I'm getting a mullet in the back, <laughs> you know, with how long it is. And it's just, no, get that, get it out of here. Hey, don't be knocking mullets. Those <laughs> things were awesome. It was great to be able to do this back in the day. <laughs> Yeah, not so much anymore. So, but we, we got a little off track with the prov provincial reopening here. It's, it's something we're likely going to be talking a lot about over the next few weeks. Touching base with some businesses, seeing how things are playing out. Uh, and again, hopefully this is the last time. Our vaccination numbers are pretty good. We're at about 73%, I believe, for first dose. 31% uh, for second dose. I know there's that, they call it the Delta variant, which is, which you can still get with both doses apparently. But it's important to realize that this isn't a cure. The, the, vac the vaccines we're getting aren't a cure. It just minimizes the impact. It minimizes the effect. So if you didn't have it, maybe you'd be feeling a whole heck of a lot worse. Um, but again, like, 
we'll see how this plays out. I mean, there's still a, there's still a lot to go through, but it, it, it's a little bit of optimism. And we've been missing that, haven't we, for the last little while in terms of Manitoba? Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, me personally, I, I have just been staying at home a lot, and that hasn't bugged me because uh, I, like, I like to do my, my personal downtime. But I know for others, like, they go out a lot and they see their family in, like, different cities or whatever because they don't all live in the same place. Uh, and and they've, been, they've been missing that. So uh, this will hopefully give them a good opportunity to go out and do that again. Uh, of course, still doing their part to be safe, you know, still be wearing masks, even though you're vaccinated. It, it's highly recommended that you do. Um, and, yeah, there will be different things that you can do if you have both doses. Uh, I actually just got my second shot today at 9.50 a.m. Uh, that's serious day, the day we're recording this. And uh, yeah, you'll have to, you'll, you'll get to apply for a card after your second dose uh, for a two-week period. Yep. I think you have to wait two for that. Two weeks. Uh, I don't think I'm going to use it for anything really, but you know, it'll just be nice to have with my vaccination record. So I'm yeah. still disappointed that this cards won't get us discounts at like Subway or McDonald's <laughs> or anything like that. I mean, come on, oh, come on government. What are you doing here? Little, little extra incentive boost, like get a discount if you're fully vaccinated. That'd be fun. Exactly. It, it's funny actually that you bring up uh, your second dose, which you did get today uh, as of the recording day, because it's just amusing. Um, in the office, for the most part, uh, some of the front office staff got their shots before. But in terms of the, the, the paper, I was one of the first ones to get my shot. And it was an AstraZeneca at the time. And the turnover on AstraZeneca between your first and second shot has to be eight weeks. Um, so I was one of the first ones to get the shot. But then everybody else was rolling in and was able to get uh, Pfizer or Moderna for their uh, first shot. And their turnover rate is only about four weeks. So even though I was one of the first ones to get a shot, I'm one of the last ones to get the, se the second shot. I'm not booked until Tuesday of, uh, of next week, just before Canada Day. But uh, again, looking forward to some soreness in the shoulder and being a little sleepy. And hopefully that's about it. Um, mm. So we're all doing our part. And hopefully everyone else is doing their part as well. So... We'll, uh, we'll get through this. And we can do things like this next story. Uh, the farmer's market with some of the changes, the restrictions. And, and they were able to, I believe, even with, before the restrictions, because it's retail, I think. But the farmer's market over at Arts Forward is going to be able to kick off again. And it's, as of today's record, it's kicking off today as we record this. Like two hours from now, they're going to be down there looking after that stuff. And it sounds like it's going to be amazing. Yeah, uh, of course, it is going to be different than the pre-COVID farmers markets because it's not a social gathering. Uh, it's not set up to be a social gathering. It's just going to be strictly retail. You go in, you take a look at the product there, and uh, if you're going to get something, you get something and, you know, be on your way. Um, but it's still going to be fun very much so to see all the different stuff there. Uh, I don't know what vendors they'll have there for this event, but yeah, they're going to be continuing on uh, starting today, uh, the date of recording, and uh, all throughout the summer. Uh, it'll be June until the first week of September, so something to look forward to every week, which is awesome. Uh, and yes, you are correct, they are classified as retail, uh, so they are able to put this on. This sort of with the restrictions that we have now, it sort of helps them put it on a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they will have their, their regular setup uh, in terms of previously holding it during COVID uh, in regards to, you know, limited entry and exits uh, just to help with traffic flow. Uh, traffic will be single directional and there will be hand sanitizer available as well. That's right. And it will be going on, as Casper said, every Thursday throughout the rest of the summer leading into the fall. It's, it's amazing these little things that you don't give much thought to at the time are the one thing or the two things you miss the most when they're gone. Um, just the, the ability just to go out to one of these things and just check out a few things. Um, so take advantage of it as long as you do it safely and you do it smart. Um, we'll be able to get to do more of these little things 
that maybe we all took a little bit for granted before. Let me talk to you a little bit about uh, a story I had a chance to cover. I, I did a tour of a local business a couple weeks ago, about 10 days ago, 11 days ago, um, just before our previous deadline for the paper, so it appears in this week's edition of the paper, uh, an expansion of a business, this and that manufacturing limited. If you're in Nipawai, you know them, you know the building, and you know what they're able to do with cabinetry. Uh, many of you use them on a regular basis. Uh, you're very, they, they got good word of mouth, very good word of mouth throughout the West Man region, and you want that in a business. So now they're expanding their business to something a little bit broader, Park Mobile Park Model Mobile Homes. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with that, it's, it's not an RV, essentially. Don't, don't think of it as an RV or, a, or anything like that, or a, a, prefab to a prefab sort of home like that, or a modular home. It's something different. It's, you can take it out to the beach, you plop it down on your, your property, uh, you can take it to an RV area, and you can plop it down on there, but you can put like a porch or a patio on there, and it can become a permanent part of it. Um, it and the thing is, and the thing that blew me away from the tour was they don't look like RVs. They don't look like modular homes. They look like homes, like actual homes. And that, that's kind of the point. Um, I, I had a chance to talk with uh, Rob and uh, Kareen uh, Mammon and, and, and uh, for, for this and that, and they walked me through the whole process. They told me about how they got into it, how, how the response has been so far, and, and what they hope to do with this business in terms of making it bigger. And it's really quite exciting. Um, it, I'll be honest, because like, Casper here is, and you, you've heard this from me over the years. Um, I've lived in Nipawa a few years and still rent. Because again, housing is expensive, and media doesn't pay you squat diddly. <laughs> oh, although, although I, I, if Ken hears this, he'll be wait a minute. No, Ken pays. Ken, we're doing all right. I'm not missing. I'm not missing any meals, as you can tell. <laughs> but having worked in media for 16 years, I know that a lot of media they don't pay well, and uh, you have to rent. I still rent to this day. But I want to be able to help out and pay my fair share. But I don't need a four-bedroom house. I don't need a giant lot of land. I just need simple, much like me, simple, basic. Just need a couple of rooms and a kitchen, and, and that's it. Um, and these are the types of things that maybe are that for, for young people that are just starting out there. Uh, but... It's, it's really interesting. I, I'm not selling it, nor should I sell it. They sell themselves. <laughs> uh, if you want to check it out, you got to check out this and that's website. I got to admit, I was thoroughly and utterly, I was blown away by it, Casper. Um, the pictures, they don't really do it justice. Yeah, I feel like it's definitely one of those. Uh, cause of, of course, the picture's on the page there, and then I went through some of the other ones in the folder. It, it, it definitely feels very much like a pictures don't do it justice situation, much like how it's gone uh, with uh, the new Touchwood building and, and many other things in the past. Um, but they, yeah, like they look really good. You can see it on the page there. And um, it, like it looks like something that I could probably live in by myself or maybe with like one other person depending. And it would be really comfortable. Like I would be, I'd be pretty happy in that little space. So definitely check that out. It's a pretty cool story. Well, the thing is with those as well is um, the base model, the smallest one is 428 square feet. And I walked into the one that was 428 or yeah, 428. And it didn't feel, you didn't feel claustrophobic. You had room, you had rooms, you know, to, to spare and the the other one the 538 you'll see a picture of it in the paper there was like wow this is this is all right and there was that fad a couple years ago um tiny homes tiny houses and all that i think it's died down a little bit but it was more along the lines of two three hundred square feet that's a little small that's a little tight 
Like these, you got a little bit of room to breathe. And, you know, I'm not saying Nipawa needs to sort of look into something like that. Um, they have certain rules. A uh, thousand square feet, I believe, is the requirement. And it, could, it should be for a community. You should have consistency. But with all these sort of side subdivisions going on, maybe think about maybe it's a lot of eight or a lot of ten for just people who maybe want just a nice little spot. Oh God, I'm going to have to sort of, I might have to do a sort of thing to council one of these days to see if I can pitch them on that. <laughs> Ah, this is what happens when you open your big mouth, Casper. People expect you to follow through on what you're chirping about. <laughs> you get ideas and they want you to go after your ideas and hopefully make some change. Exactly. The lesson, always shut up. <laughs> well, <laughs> but we're not going to shut up just yet because we still got a few other stories we want to tell you about and to share. Um, some major construction, as you are aware of, if you live in Nipawa, is nearing a conclusion. Kinsman Courts 2, that huge building that's uh, being put up uh, in the downtown area of Nipawa, is getting close to being completed. And as part of that, uh, Kinsman Courts as a collective, not just Kinsman Courts 2, but Kinsman Courts 1, is, uh, is doing some things. And, and one of those things is the hiring of a new executive director. Uh, Dana Menzies, if I remember correctly, that was a story that was written by Kira Patterson. You can find that on page uh, A12 of this week's. Uh, Kira had an opportunity to speak with Dana about her new role with Kinsman Courts 1 and 2, what it entails, what the future of both buildings is, and what they're thinking about for them. So it's, it's interesting to see. I mean, we do have an aging population. Actually, Technically, every population ages. I mean, is, uh, that's just the way time works. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, we, we do have a, a, a population that's getting older uh, compared to younger uh, in Nipua. So, you know, this is very much needed development. And it's been really interesting, actually, seeing it come along. Because uh, I remember when it just first got started. And now it's like actually a full building and it's getting close to uh to its completion so I'm very happy to see that what's interesting about that as well is to see the building actually up the structure itself because when the artist renderings were done up we all had a difficult time sort of envisioning how it was going to fit in the space didn't we yeah we did um and it's it's a good thing that you brought that up because it totally slipped my mind but yeah because the space there if our if our viewers remember that was previously the old location for the salvation army right yep yeah so just picturing it going from that to a building like this it was very difficult but now that you actually see it there it's like oh yeah okay i see how that works it's not it's not too bad actually yeah there was a lot more space there than i thought i remembered <laughs> yeah, yeah really like it's yeah it just blew me away honestly What's going to be nice is to see the final product and be able to walk through those doors and take a tour of it. Now, I'm sure when that does occur, we're going to have the pictures for you in the paper. I'm sure representatives from NACTV will probably do a walking tour, a video tour, going through it all. It's going to be fantastic to sort of see it with a fresh coat of paint and everything's uh, nice and sort of looking sparkly and shiny there. And that's going to be happening sooner rather than later. All right, let's talk finally about uh, some council goings on that have been happening, oh, pardon me, for the town of Nipawa. Most likely, uh, one thing that everyone's abuzz with right now, because it's happening as we speak, is um, what's called micro sealing of a road. Uh, Brown Avenue and a few other roads here in Nipawa are getting this micro sealing treatment. Essentially, the easiest way to describe it is almost imagine like a like a road zamboni in a way um and they're putting the sealant down and we were just looking at the um road in front of the post office that was the first one that was done and holy cow it looks so much better and uh, and not only better but level that's a nice change of pace yeah for sure um we you know some of our roads are very worn out um, <laughs> and they've been in need of some touch-up for a while 
uh, Hamilton Street in some sections is definitely one of those. So hopefully, hopefully that uh, comes at some point. Um, yeah, it's it looks really good. I took a look at it and I drive down that little section by the post office like every day when I come to work. So it's it looks really nice. I'm very happy with it. And it's actually really interesting to see the process as well, because like Owen said, it is pretty much just like a street Zamboni. They got whatever substance they use and i'm pretty sure it's mentioned this story on uh on the page or in a previous story mm -hmm. um and yeah just seeing the process of how it goes down is just really interesting they and they have their equipment and they drive along and all the black material is there and they get it dried and set in and it's good to drive on and in actuality you will get an opportunity to see it because uh, christine waddell was out with a camera today getting some video so most likely in the future i don't know what time i don't know what day but we'll probably be able to see a little bit of it right here on nac tv that's going to be a ratings bonanza yeah <laughs> watching watching that <laughs> Uh, but uh, it, it's good news for the town in Ipua and very much needed. And I was saying as well, God, I can think of a few other streets that maybe could definitely use a once over on that, but a few at a time, just a couple at a time. That's the important thing for a town, always be improving, just a little bit at a time. And uh, that, that's uh, the roads here is a good example of that. Mm -hmm. Another example of that is in the story, uh, just one paragraph on that. The process of getting Park Lake back up and operational is ongoing. They got paperwork they got to fill out though. They got to dot the I's, they got to cross the T's, they've got to do a lot of paperwork with the Canadian Dam Association. Now, I'm not, I'm not angry at the association. It's actually for, for dams, the Canadian Dam Association. Uh, it's a federal agency that takes care of it because Park Lake essentially was, was dammed in. So um, they got to go through all of those. Most likely the paperwork will be looked after by the end of the year. And maybe hopefully this time next year, something will be started and a version of Park Lake that we, we know and remember will return sometime soon. Um, just one other thing as well, uh, just really quick here. Uh, Bray Farm subdivision, they're doing a subdivision on that land known as where the chicken barns were so some commercial property is being subdivided out there we don't know what business just yet everybody's sort of speculating about it wondering what it is we've got a few ideas here and there but nothing concrete it's going to be interesting though it's a little east the land they're talking about is a little east of westward forward and it's kind of interesting to see what's going to end up there it just shows once again Nipawa is really starting to pop off isn't it yeah we're sort of getting like different uh different things here and there and uh it's always good to see the community growing and i'm very curious to see what this business will be uh i know we just got one that is starting to put up signage that is not going in that location but we'll we'll be talking about that next week i'm sure or or a little bit further down the line uh, so that's definitely something to look forward to uh, in addition to whatever the heck is going to go in that spot. So keep your eyes open for that. That's right. Now we're going to wrap things up for this week. Uh, we always appreciate you taking a little bit of your time to spend with us. And again, Casper, thank you very much for sitting in in the chair this week and uh, walking us through what we had to talk about. Good to be here as always. And I look forward to appearing on another show in the future. Well, that's a darn lie. We know that. <laughs> As long as I'm not hosting, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but again, thank you. If you have story ideas or suggestions for us, we'd love to hear from you. Give us a call right here at 476-3401 or contact us via email at news at nipawabanner.com. We love your story ideas. We like to get out as much as possible, but we can't get every story unless you sort of help us out. Point us in the right direction. And we'll definitely cover something that you think is interesting um, and again if you have any other questions or inquiries or would like to do some advertising with us get in touch with us 476-3401 so for Casper I'm Owen and once again we always appreciate you thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of the story behind the stories <laughs>